This partial skull was found in central India 40 years ago, but its exact age and classification has mystified anthropologists ever since. Some classify it as an advanced Homo erectus, while others classify it as an archaic Homo sapiens because of its large brain case, small brow ridge, and other features. Remarkably, the understanding of human evolution in South Asia primarily rests on a solitary partial skullcap from central India, but its disputed taxonomic status has blurred the picture of human migrations. Indeed, humanity's origin story has gotten increasingly tangled in recent years. We sometimes compare the ancient world to the mythical Middle Earth, but instead of hobbits, dwarfs and elves, our planet was populated with modern humans in Africa, Neanderthals in Europe, Denisovans in Asia, and other more mysterious humans. The discovery provides the first scientifically recorded evidence of human skeletal remains from the Indian subcontinent, dating to the late Middle Pleistocene of 300,000 to 150,000 years ago. The large-brained, Robust hominin appeared around 300,000 years old, in association with megaterrestrial fauna and later Shulian toolkits. This dating is important, because if the skull is recognized as an archaic Homo sapiens, that could throw a wrench in the out of Africa hypothesis, and support the idea that Homo sapiens evolved beyond Africa, possibly the Indian subcontinent, before moving into Africa around 300,000 years ago. The great robustness or thickness of the cranial vault or calvarium first indicated it was Homo erectus, which was further attested by a landmark morphometric study. The first study concluded that the calvarium belonged to an evolved Homo erectus. But a second study assigned the calvarium to archaic Homo sapiens, presenting a great mosaic of features. Homo sapiens traits include a large cranial capacity of around 1,155 to 1,421 cubic centimeters, compared to smaller-brained Homo erectus, which averages 1,000 cubic centimeters. The fossil could be of a female individual aged between 25 and 30 years, which is important because females have a smaller average brain case, about 10% smaller than males. For those who lump all the old world middle Pleistocene hominin fossils in a single widely occurring species, Homo heidelbergensis, the calvarium eluded them as Homo heidelbergensis. Another analysis removed the calvarium from the Asian Homo erectus lineage, and regarded it akin to the European Steinheim man, and suggested a general resemblance to other European middle Pleistocene hominins. However, a scrutiny of these non-metric traits, and the various morphometric comparisons, also endorses European affinity. The overall score of maximum affinity ranking is as follows. Number 1. Petrolona skull from Greece. Number 2. La Ferrisi and La Chapelloc Saints Neanderthals of France, followed by the Corbway skull from Broken Hill in Zambia, known as Homo rhodesiensis. All of these skulls date to around the same time period and have been variously described as having a mix of modern and archaic traits belonging to Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, and some are lumped into the Homo heidelbergensis clade. There is also some similarities to the Dali skull of China, with a score of 6 on the affinity scale, which is close to Denisovans and Dragon Man, aka Homo longi. The other African and Asian hominins show minimal affinities, according to the paper. In other words, the hominin calvarium belonged to a big-brained species from Europe or East Africa such as Homo heidelbergensis or archaic Homo sapiens, rather than to Homo erectus. Homo heidelbergensis, however, is a catch-all species, with many believing that it should be broken into different subspecies, and that it is not the ancestor of Homo sapiens. But, the skull's considerable affinities with the classical Neanderthals are more a surprise and difficult to explain except through hybridization. There is a possibility of hybridization, due to India's mid-intercontinental place in the Old World as a possible crossroads or corridor of early hominin migrations. This is possibly why the Calvarium possesses a mosaic of traits. Its unique features may be explained as a result of considerable local evolution after hybridization, as happened among the Neanderthal group of hominins in Europe. All this makes the phylogenetic status of the calvarium very confusing, but the implications of early Homo sapiens living in India 300,000 years ago is shocking. 
the discovery proved the presence of early humans in the subcontinent and filled a void in our knowledge about human evolution. The discovery opened a new chapter in terms of hard evidence of human evolution in South Asia. Unlike Africa, where stone tools were found along with human skeletons, all over India archaeologists were finding prehistoric stone tools, but there was no fossil evidence. So, why don't we have more human fossils from India? In some regions the presence of fossils depends on preservation conditions, such as soil chemistry and erosion rates. In other regions, either enough systematic survey has not been done or potential hominid fossil material has been overlooked. The archaeological data do not rule out the possibility that Homo erectus had inhabited the Indian subcontinent, but fossil remains of this species have not been recovered yet. The specimen was compared with crania of other hominid fossils of the Middle Pleistocene, with which it exhibited a significant number of anatomical similarities. Initially, the skull was assigned to the hominid taxon Homo erectus narmadensis. Its antiquity is based upon the direct association of the calvaria with stone tools, mainly hand axes and cleavers, typical of the prehistoric Acheulean technological tradition that was dominant in Middle Pleistocene times in India. Homo erectus had successfully adapted to savanna grasslands, and had domesticated fire, did group hunting and used stone tools. In the French Riviera, at a site called Terra Amata, there is evidence of a man-made hut with hearths, and even a footprint, believed to be the handiwork of Homo erectus from 400,000 years ago. Surely, one fossil can never tell the full story, but some physical features of the Calvaria were not typically those found in Homo erectus fossils from Southeast Asia, China, and Africa. For example, the cranial capacity of these early and middle Pleistocene Homo erectus specimens averages 1,000 cubic centimeters, but estimates for the cranial vault fell between 1,155 and 1,421 cubic centimeters, values within the range of anatomically modern Homo sapiens. If you're not yet subscribed, please click that big red button now, so you don't miss any of our highly compelling videos, thank you. Moreover, a treasure trove of ancient stone tools suggests that human circuitous path to modernity also wound through India. The question is, who made them? In a paper published in the journal Nature, researchers described thousands of stone implements uncovered at an archaeological site in southeast India. The tools span about a million years of history, and illustrate the evolution of big blunt hand axes into finely sculpted stone points. Then, starting about 385,000 years ago, long before modern humans were thought to have arrived in India, it appears that an advanced toolmaking culture was developing there. No remains were found alongside the tools, meaning it's impossible to determine whether the tools were produced by modern humans or one of our hominin cousins. If they were produced by members of our species, it would significantly shift the timeline of human evolution. At the very least the discovery suggests complex interactions between the mystery hominins in India and their relatives around the world. It shows that simple linear narratives of dispersal only at certain time periods are incorrect. If modern humans evolved in Africa, the oldest known bones that could feasibly belong to our species were found in a Moroccan cave called Jebel Urhoud and dated to 300,000 years ago. The recent discovery of human fossils in an Israeli cave suggests that we may have ventured into other continents as early as 194,000 years ago. With so few fossils available, reconstructing the story of human evolution and migration is a bit like trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle when you have just a handful of middle pieces and no edges or corners. Often, scientists must trace the movements of our ancestors through the stone tools we created. The first hominins to leave Africa carried with them oval and pear-shaped hand axes used to pound and scrape food, a technology called Acheulean. The oldest tools found in India, which are more than one million years old, were crafted in this tradition. But in a second batch of implements uncovered from a rock layer that spans 385,000 to 172,000 years ago, plus or minus about 50,000 years on either end, those heavy hand axes give way to smaller, 
more sophisticated points. One of the points even appears to have a groove that would allow it to be affixed to some kind of projectile, like a spear. This kind of technology has long been associated with Neanderthals and Homo sapiens in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, and it wasn't thought to have arrived in India until humans reached South Asia about 100,000 years ago. Known as Levalloy, this technique is associated with significant advances in human cognition, because such tools can't be crafted without the ability to think abstractly and plan ahead. Thus, the importance of the Calvaria is that it demonstrates that there was advanced hominids in a part of the world that lies between the richer hominid fossil sites in Africa, in Southeast Asia and the Far East. Thanks for watching. Please check out these other videos or join us in the comments section.